Hi and welcome to another episode. What we've got here is is me trying to make sure I'm not making a liar out of myself because I have an Amiga 1200 with an M SATA drive in, as you can see from here. Um, on Twitter, for some reason, I keep referring to it as a M.2 drive, even though I know it's an M SATA drive. I know because it was me who put it in there. But yes, it's overkill because it's 240 gigs worth, but it's fun to have it in there because not many other people get to say they've got a 240 gig hard drive in their an Amiga 1200. And granted, it is an M SATA. And now, and I also know that the speed of it is slowed down because it has to go through to the PATA converter device, which is in there. So it really is overkill. Now, I'm going to take it one more step and make it really, really overkill because, as I say, I keep referring to it as an M.2. So I'm going to put an M.2 in. And hopefully that works. And if it does, I can stop making a liar at myself. Now, I realize there's M.2 SATA and there's M.2 NVMe. I know the differences. I really do. But for some reason, early in the morning on Twitter, someone's babbling on about 1200. And I go, I've got a 1200 with a 240 gig M.2 driving. And I don't. I have an M SATA driving, which, as I say, I want to cure that problem. So here's all the bits. So we've got an M.2 SSD enclosure, USB type C. That's just so that I can play around with it on the PC. If I remember rightly, I had to remove the whole, um, the fact that a partition had been put on, I had to make it that it was completely blank for the MSATA one. I seem to remember doing that, might not be true. Um, but the thing is, is that it will also give me access to play around on Windows with Win UAE, so that it can see the drive and I can copy a load of stuff onto it on the PC once it's actually been set up on the Amiga. So that comes in handy. The drive itself, obviously, which is an integral 256 gigabytes M.2 SATA 3. Um, yes, it's a little bit bigger, but it's going to make no difference really in storage space time it's finished. But um, that should be fun to have. Then we have the heat sinks for this thing. You know, they're cheap enough. Why not get them anyway? But it might be there might not be space. So, you know, fingers crossed there is. There should be. And then we have the adapter from uh, changing it from, what is it called now? Pata or Eid, depending on which side of the fence you want to argue on that one out. If, but, so maybe, does it really matter? Yes, it does, but yeah. Anyway, Pata, um, it's the 44 pin type one, not the 40 pin, which you would normally see for like a three and a half inch. This is for two and a half inch, so it's the 44 pin. And that converts it to M.2 SATA, so because there is differences between the the interface of the uh, the drives themselves to M SATA to SATA and even like SATA uh, M.2 NVMe. Sorry. So yes. Anyway, let's try to make sure it all works. So I'm gonna remove this, these stuff from the packaging and stick them in the Amiga. And let's get on with it because I know you're getting bored listening to me right now. So as you can see, is my M.2 setup. So I'm just going to mess around and replace it with this. I've already put the M.2 drive in the adapter. Uh, as I say, I've just got to swap it over. And I'm going to test about installing it. Um, because what I've done here is actually used some double-sided sticky pad things to hold this down to the hard drive cage, which of course doesn't want to remove now, because I wasn't really thinking I'd ever go back in and swap this up across. But even so, it should be easy enough to get off. and. Um, Put that there basically Take this adapter out because this is a fancy adapter to help buffer the drive and the whole cage should just pop up there we go i haven't really got space to put my omega 1200 anywhere really so i'll just slide this forward as i say i've got some very strong sticky tabs on here and i want to peel these off without breaking the board, the PCB. They are very, very strong. I may all have to get like a razor blade and scratch underneath, aiming towards the cage, not the PCB, because obviously if this doesn't work out, I need to put it all back. Yep, it's easy enough using a craft knife, Stanley knife, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we move that one, and we put that somewhere safe for now, because that does work. Plug 
this in here making sure the pins line up put the cage back in and be careful about lining this one up as well and then we'll put something just to act as an insulator for now get it all plugged in and I'll try booting on okay we're a bit of playing around I've already made sure it works under 3.14 but I wanted to make sure it works under 3.2 so let's move across just to prove I've got 3.2 here's the CD case and the ROMs are already plugged in so I'm just waiting for it to boot up let's move across so 3.2 HD tools let's load this up and define how we want the hard drives to be or the M.2 finally an M.2 should have to click drive type new define reconfiguration continue click OK there we go we can click OK again So we now can partition the drives. Well, we don't need that one being 120 now, do we? Let's bring that down to 80, just for the fun of it. And then we'll slide this across. Actually, let's do this properly here. Sorry, I'm messing around a bit too much, aren't I? Press Enter, always press Enter after doing the thing, changing something. Options. Buffers, I'm going to change to 4,000, oops, 4,096 because I can, because I've got the vampire in there. Boot priority is zero. Um, I should be able to just change this one now to full size and change the buffers on this to 4,096. 4096 as well pressing enter change that to the h1 press enter so just looking back we've got the h0 4096 the h1 4096 the box size has already been changed to 4096 on this bit i believe that's okay if anyone has a better idea then please let me know i do want to just use the new basic um was it fast file system yeah and um, we should be able to just click ok making sure that is fully across save changes to drive click exit come away from there after doing that doing a quick soft reboot we've got our partitions we need to format them now so select one format it this one I'm going to have, this is the 79 gigabyte one, so this is my uh, system one. I'll be able to use long file names. So format, format that, format. Did I not do a quick format? I specifically, like, it's too big to do a quick, so try that again way too many wise system format of course quick format 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 yes of course quick format I don't know why I clicked a full format it would take forever if you did that this is my 158 gigabyte one so I want that as being my work drive uh, quick format 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 as I said plenty of times before, this is just, well, basically um, proof of concept. So we've got this now. We need to go across to the install disk. Because we need an operating system on here, don't we? Okay, a quick reboot with the install 3.2 being pointed out by the GoTech. Um, the drives have been formatted, as you know. So 
let's see how it goes for installing. I've not installed 3.2 before. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to start from within here. <laughs> Who knows? But we've got a British English, and since I'm British, I'm going to install that. I won't be surprised I could actually get the CD emulation going and have my CD drive hooked up. So it wants me to find the local disk, so I'll mess around doing all of this and let's see how it works. So after a little bit of messing around, we've got Amiga OS 3.2 installed. Got the libraries going so it recognizes the vampire, that's good. You can see across the top a daft amount of graphical memory and all the memory and all that fun stuff. Um, let's go to system tools hd toolbox gotta be careful with this we don't mess around too much but as you can see 256 gigabytes ssd which is actually an m.2 sata m.2 sata not m.2 nvme because that's the version that they're trying to stick into the playstation 5 and play around but technically now my amiga 1200 has an m.2 working which is really really nice to have um, it's a little bit of an upgrade from the MSATA in the realms of technology, in the realms of speed. It won't be because, of course, it has to go back down to the PATA stroke eyed speeds that the Amiga 1200 can handle, which is actually relatively slow, but it works. That's the point. Um, apart from that, though, head down to the description and I'll put the links to all the bits and pieces I've bought. I've not been, you know, sponsored by anybody with this to buy these parts directly. I do have some wonderful people backing me on Patreon. A few people have stepped up in the past month, which is really, really nice of you to do. So if you want to do that too, check down in the description and also have a look at the Discord. There's some nice people hanging around in there as well. Let's get some real chat going. Some people seem to be a little bit shy right now, which is fine, but it'd be nice to get some chats going and you know chat among yourselves as well. You don't always need me there. And on top of that though, please have a look at the description and click it. Make sure you are subscribed, click that notification bell, click that like button, and if you really so wish, click the dislike. Sad if you do, but, you know, it's there. I hope this has been some great information for you out there. As I say, M.2, inside Amiga 1200, what else can you want? But as always, happy gaming.